All right, so I'm here to talk about security PHA review. Um, what's going to be interesting about this topic, and I won't belabor uh, a discussion of myself, but you'll note that I am a chemical engineer by training. Uh, and I'm actually not going to talk about cybersecurity almost at all, other than how process safety is going to be related to cybersecurity and how in the future your process safety groups are going to be establishing for you how much cybersecurity they need as a function of the, of the risks uh, of the processes that are under control. So the starting point is that cybersecurity should be based on the risk of the process. And we have ample experience in understanding and analyzing the risk posed by process plants. We've been doing it for a long time. Unfortunately, most cyber risk analysis activities don't consider the process. They simply look at the industrial control system equipment. So things like a cyber HAZOP or a cyber PHA or a CHAZOP, they're it's essentially failure modes and effects analysis of the control equipment, but they don't tell you what happens to the process. So you end up with poorly defined accident scenarios. You simply know that, well, someone can take remote control of the process, but what are they going to do with it? That's the important part that's not discussed. Uh, you can, and that also results in infinite potential outcomes on what someone can do when they get control of your plant. Also, from a process safety perspective, that approach ignores the most important way to make your processes safe, which is through inherent safety or making sure that the plant is designed in such a way that it can't fail. Uh, so I'm going to go out on a limb here uh, and tell you that a well-designed plant will not need any cybersecurity to prevent the major catastrophic scenarios. Now, I'm not saying that it doesn't need any cybersecurity because attackers will always be able to shut a plant off and that is a nuisance, it's expensive. But we, what we're trying to prevent the pro, on the process safety side is allowing any kind of cyber attack to be able to cause a loss of containment of chemicals or oil or anything that's contained in the processes. And how we're gonna do this is a new approach called security PHA review because the traditional methods that we've used to analyze process risk have fallen down and allowed some incidents to happen and we wanna make sure uh, that that doesn't happen again. So this security PHA review process is going to allow you to determine how much cybersecurity you need as a function of risk and maybe even redesign your plant uh, to design the risk out entirely. Okay, so I don't know if any of you remember these guys. Uh, as a child, back when media was hand carried to your house and printed on paper, there was something called Mad Magazine that I used to get, and this is Spy versus Spy. Uh, and this just, this is what process engineers, safety engineers think of when they, when they hear cybersecurity. You've got the guy in the black hat and the guy in the white hat, and they're throwing bombs at each other, and they have elaborate plans to undo each other, but at the end of the day, a lot of things are damaged, but nothing successfully actually occurs. Fun to read, but not actually fun when you're trying to run a plant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this security PHA review process with an actual uh, example. So this is a picture of a pump station. And I, I'm going to use this uh, because there are uh, some one of the accidents or, or one of the incidents where cybersecurity has been known to cause physical damage uh, and actually cause harm to people was at a pump station. So I want to show how the traditional risk analysis failed 
and how a security PHA review will prevent what happened from occurring in the future. So what we're doing with the pump station is we're basically bringing oil in. Oh, let me get here. So we're bringing oil in in the incoming pipeline. Uh, sometimes you have a surge tank to store some oil. And then we're going to run it through the pump and pump it out. So in this incident that occurred, and it's actually not too far from where we are right now where the attack actually happened, and I'm not going to give you the details of the actual attack, I'm just going to speak in generalities for pump stations. So what occurred was we began, begin by overriding our high pressure shutdown. So on the discharge of the pump, you're measuring the pressure, and then if the pressure goes too high, you're de-energizing the switch gear, removing the three-phase power from the pumps, and causing the pump to stop. So that's, that is supposed to be our protection. Well, if you override this, remotely because it's in a safety instrumented system that's PLC based. It's in a computer so you can hack it. Um, you can also override pressure alarms, flow alarms because they're in the basic process control system which is computer based and that is also hackable. And then you close the, the downstream valve. Now this downstream valve has a very important purpose. If there's ever a seal leak in this pump and it catches on fire, we want to close the downstream and the upstream valves in order to limit the inventory of oil that is supplied to the fire to help us put the fire out and minimize the amount of damage. But if you close this valve while the pump is still running, which is what they did, you're going to build up pressure in this pipe segment between the valve and the pump. And in the case of the accident, the pipe overpressured. The pressure went beyond what the piping could handle. It burst, sprayed oil into the air, which then found a source of ignition, and you have a fire explosion and a lot of, uh, a lot of damage to both people, property, and the environment. So that's what happened. But this could have very, very easily been avoided. And as a matter of fact, Conexus has done some studies for some pumping stations in Russia that's taking oil from the Caspian region, and it's uh, loaded on tankers somewhere north of here in the Black Sea. And I can guarantee you uh, on the pump stations that Conexus helped design by doing the process hazards analysis, this scenario couldn't happen. So let's talk about why. Well, what safety engineers do to analyze risk usually is a process hazards analysis. The process hazards analysis techniques like HAZOP, or a hazards and operability study, have been in use for about 50 years now. They're not new. We've been doing them for a long time. We've gotten very good at them. What we do when we're performing a HAZOP is we take a facility and we break it down into small groups of equipment that we call nodes. And then for that group of process equipment, we're going to analyze every deviation that's possible. So what is a deviation? You look at a process parameter like temperature, pressure, flow, composition, and then you apply guide words like higher pressure, lower pressure, reverse flow. And then for each one of those guide words, you determine whether or not there's a cause, and then if there is a cause, what is the consequence and how many safeguards are available to prevent that situation from happening. So in this particular case, uh, we started with a deviation of high pressure, and the team that's doing this study said, well, high pressure can be developed if the emergency isolation valve on the pump discharge fails to the closed position. If it does, there will be a, cons uh, a consequence of overpressure, and we assign categories and risk to that situation. Then we identify, well, what are the safeguards that will protect against this situation from occurring? And we found that, well, there's a high-pressure interlock uh, that is designed to safety integrity level two, so it's a higher integrity safety shutdown. 
So based on a pure analysis of risk, this situation is okay because we have a sufficient amount of safeguards. If we didn't have a sufficient amount of safeguards, then we would recommend adding more. Well, the problem that we ran into is that this process only considers random hardware failures. But in the world of internet-connected control systems, now we also have to consider deliberate attacks. And that's what an SPR is meant to do as a modification to this process that we've been doing for about 50 years. So what is a security PHA review? It's an additional step that's going to occur either during the HAZOP study or immediately following the HAZOP study. Uh, so it's something that fits into the way that plants are designed today. It just adds an additional step. And as a result of that additional step, we are either going to recommend new safeguards or we are going to use that analysis to assign a security level in accordance with ISA 62443 or IEC 62443. So it's a security level that determines all of the parameters of your uh, cyber hygiene to protect your plant with lower levels requiring less and higher levels requiring more. So how this works is we're going to take that HAZOP document and we're going to go through every cause and determine if it's hackable. And what does hackable mean? If it resides in something that has a microprocessor, it's hackable. And I'm not going, as a process engineer, I don't want to know, I don't care what the vulnerabilities are, what kind of intrusion detection, it doesn't matter to me. If it's in a microprocessor, it's hackable, and I'm going to design based on that. Uh, but there are things that are not hackable, like mechanical devices and Human operations, uh, there's some research going on now in using operator interfaces to trick people into doing things that they shouldn't. But for, for the sake of this discussion, let's just say that people are not hackable. So if you go through this process and your cause is hackable and all of the safeguards are hackable, that's bad. We have to do something about that. So the next question is, well, what would we do? Um, the first option to look at, and here's, here's, here's an example of uh, this type of study. So in this case, we, we looked at the cause, and we saw that the closing that isolation valve is done by the control system, the DCS, so it's hackable. Our one safeguard of high-pressure interlock is also hackable, so this, this is no good. We need to do something about it. So we can use cybersecurity. And how much cybersecurity we need is going to be a function of the consequence category. So in this case, uh, we had very high, or high or very high, I don't remember, uh, multiple fatalities. If that's the case, you need a very high security level to protect against that. Again, is it hackable? Yes or no. If it is, then what is the consequence? That's going to define your security level. Uh, so in this case, we would have picked security level three. But then again, you know, as a process guy, I know that if I recommend SIL three, I've got th those guys over there trying to implement it. So what else can I do as a process engineer? So now you would never have expected at a cybersecurity conference that you're going to see a pump curve. Uh, so for those of you who've never seen this before, uh, when you buy a pump, a centrifugal pump, it's going to get delivered with a curve that looks like this that's going to relate the flow rate to developed head, and I won't go into the details, but essentially that's the pressure. How much pressure can the pump deliver as a function of what the flow rate is? As the flow rate goes higher, the pressure that's achieved goes down. But what's important from safety design is this zero point. So if there is no flow, the dis discharge is blocked, there's a maximum amount of pressure that will be developed. So the, the inherent safety step is, well, forget about cybersecurity, as long as the pipe has enough thickness to contain that much pressure, you can't, that scenario that we just talked about can't happen. And if you remember the picture 
This is only like a couple meters of piping between the pump and this discharge valve. Not having that design to the maximum discharge pressure of the pump is an inexcusable failure of imagination and basic engineering. So that's step number one. Well, what if I don't want to do that? What if my boss said we can't afford really thick piping, which is ridiculous, but there are other options, so other non-hackable safeguards. For pressure relief, you can use a, uh, this is a, a, a spring-based pressure relief valve. So as the pressure of material gets higher, it pushes on the plug, it's going to overcome the force of the spring, and then allow the material to escape. So the pressure goes high, the spring opens, and it dumps the material to a storage tank. Uh, other similar options include a rupture disc, which if the pressure goes high, this sacrificial membrane just pops open to allow material through. Uh, this is a buckling pin device that works similarly to the relief valve, except instead of a spring, there's just a pin that's going to bend and break when the pressure gets too high. There's another option. Can't hack any of these things. Next item up is a motor overload relay. So this is where, actually, even as a chemical engineer, I'm not as well-versed in this as I could be, but when you block the discharge on a pump, the current going through the pump motor either goes really high or really low. I don't remember off the top of my head. If you're a chemical engineer, you probably know and you can let everyone else know. But when that happens, you're going to be able to, using analog circuitry, monitor the current going through the motor, and if it goes excessively high or excessively low, you can drop out the three-phase power, all analog. Another option that you always have, regardless of what type of function you're looking at, is an analog mimic, mimic of a digital circuit. So if, uh, if, I'm, if I have a temperature measurement, there might be a digital pathway through a safety PLC, but you can always, in parallel, wire an analog pathway using a current monitor relay switch to drop out the power to those final devices. That's always an option. So these are some of the options that are available in this case. And when I redo this process hazards analysis to include the security PHA review con uh, concept, you'll see that, uh, please allow me to back up, there we go. You'll see that even though the cause is hackable, for the scenario to be hackable, I would have all the safeguards be hackable, but the only one of the ones that I listed that is hackable is that high pressure shutdown that's in the safety PLC. Analog mimic is not, mechanical pressure relief is not, motor overload relay is not. Since that is the case, this scenario can't be hack hacked and it drops out of the analysis for determination of how much security you need as a function of risk. Now, once again, I'll re-emphasize here that this doesn't mean you don't need any cybersecurity because you still can shut the plant down. But what we prevented is piping bursting and sending oil everywhere, which is the consideration that we're looking at here. So in terms of security PHA review, the benefits, we're going to lower our risk to a tolerable level. And this one is really important, a better understanding of attack vectors. I've heard of complaints of being able to convince management to give you money for cybersecurity. Well, when you can go through a process risk analysis and tell management exactly what scenario it is that you're trying to prevent, you have concrete information and you're much more likely to get funding. And then there's going to be making the right choices, increased efficiency, standards compliance, and more information on this is coming soon. ISA is going to be releasing a book called Security PHA Review probably uh, later this fall. Hopefully it'll get released before winter along with the training class. Thank you for your time. I appreciate your attention.